Hey everyone, I'm Jacob Brennan, also known as Jake Ren, and in today's video, we are going to take a tour of my corner that two-thirds of my life is spent in. So, without further ado, let's check out our first section. Guys, this is what I like to call the powerhouse. It pretty much powers most of the things here in my studio and most of the speakers that I use when I record music. This is considered to be my power conditioner, which it's really not, but it's an old computer power console that I picked up from the Salvation Army. This is the Harman Kardon 730, which is the big boy, and it is a twin powered receiver. FMAM and it also has two AUXs for the red and white input and two tape monitors, contour, bass, treble, and two phonos. The one above it is my cheapest receiver that I have inside of the studio. It is an innovative technology CDSB, Bluetooth, and CD player, and it right now it's just doing its own thing, transmitting uh, FM without a signal. And just to make it look aesthetically nice, um, PS4. So, that's pretty much it. Next section. This is pretty much where all the action happens. Guys, welcome to the workstation, where two-thirds of my life is spent each day. Right in front of me is an Apple Magic Keyboard and an RGB Logitech mouse. Very, very affordable things. The Magic Keyboard is much more expensive, so just try and get a wired keyboard if you can. When it comes to referencing, I use the Sony MDR-XB550 wired headphones that go into my uh, audio interface to uh, directly monitor through sound when I'm listening and or mastering music. These little black boxes down here are Walmart speakers. These black boxes that you're seeing right now came from the CDS receiver that I showed you by Innovative Technology that I got from Walmart. And these things give off really good bass and low frequencies so I can catch the very low frequencies when necessary. Above them are the Rockville Rockshell 58A speakers that are bookshelf type speakers. And they are pretty good with monitoring considering their size. Also I wired the box speakers to the back of these speakers themselves to get both speakers to play at the same exact time. Above the bookshelf speakers are my studio monitors. These are the Mackie CR4BT studio monitors that I ordered off Amazon and they are pretty cheap if you're looking for budget-friendly studio monitors. They come with a headphone jack which diminishes all audio when plugged in. It comes with an AUX on the outside, a volume knob, a selective Bluetooth option which is flashing right now, and it has two quarter inch jacks in the back to plug into an audio interface that has a quarter inch out, left and right. I also forgot to mention, the thing behind me was the monitor. This is a Samsung UHD 4K monitor that I got from Best Buy just recently. And it looks super amazing. And it has excellent graphics when I am mastering music and it'll give me accurate lines when I am doing automation mastering. So that's awesome. And now let's check out the other side of the desk. Now that we're on this side of the room, let's talk microphones. The microphone I use the most is the newer NW8000, which is a USB microphone, as you can see at the bottom. It is pretty clear, but there are like hums that happen and the audio is not that clear, but it's clear enough. It's a good microphone when you're recording podcasts and like simple vocal. Um, stems and stuff, so consider that an option if you're looking for a microphone. Next we have an Ion um, vocal microphone, and it brings more low end out when you speak into it, but it's pretty good. And you can easily plug it in via XLR cable through the interface to record vocals and or if you want, an instrument. Yeah guys, that's both of the microphones I have, and now let's go to the next section. On this side of my desk, I have my MacBook Pro 13 inch model that I have explained in a previous video and I have also unboxed this thing. 
on my channel, so take a look at that video. Also, I have two um, audio interfaces. BandLab Link Digital version 1 that you can get on Amazon. It's $100 and it's pretty affordable. I also have my Focusrite Scarlet Solo, which is a pretty good audio interface if you ask me. I have also unboxed this on my channel and reviewed it and I got a lot of views and comments about it. So thank you guys for the support on the Scarlet Solo video. Now, you're probably wondering about the keyboards behind me. Well, let's check them out. Alright guys, now let's talk keyboards. This here is my Casio CTS200 and it is my newest keyboard out of the three I have currently here. It is equipped with 400 instruments and a ton of demo songs that you can play along to and that includes in the back a sustain pedal and it does support micro USB MIDI and unfortunately it is not velocity sensitive but it'll still work. You can still input velocity after you um, send MIDI voltage through to your DAW. Also, it has an input and output for your headphones and or audio in. And now let's look at the second keyboard. And for my next keyboard that I have in my studio is um, probably one of the most popular MIDI keyboards out there. It is the Akai MPK Mini MK2. And I know that they just released the MK3, but I have the MK2 which is no different except the fact that it has a LCD display on the uh, on right here on the MK3 but pretty good keyboard for its size and for the price it was $129 on Amazon if you want to go get it it also has sustain it has eight drum pads with two banks so it's technically 16 programmable drum pads and you got eight um, effects knobs and um, gizmos you can use here and it also has an arpeggiator built into it and a pitch knob so you can roll that around to go like yeah, or that weird sound but um yeah this is uh my second newest keyboard and it is the smallest that i have currently now we're gonna bring out the oldest keyboard that i have all right guys time to roll the grandparent of all keyboards in my studio this is the Casio Tonebank CT390. It is one of the oldest keyboards that I have in age. This uh, keyboard came out in the 1990s. It is a pulse code modulation keyboard and it has, I think, 40 or 49 keys if I'm not correct. Casio Tonebank built in. It has the Casio cord. It's got a bunch of rhythms, tones that you can select to play, bro. And it also, believe it or not, has a tuning. It also has a little tuning uh, hole here that you put a screwdriver in and then you adjust that screw inside to properly tune the piano. And you also have an output here to record into your interface if you have a 1 8 of an inch jack. And also you have your power which is re-soldered into the back over here. So this is the Casio Tonebank CT390 and and at my other house and my other studio, I have um, the same exact tone bank, but it's the CT380. So technically, I have two old Casio keyboards at both sides of my family's houses. Let's go to the outro. All right, guys, that is all this video has to offer. If you want more stuff like this, leave a like, and I might be posting more often on YouTube, which I should be doing. And we'll see you in the next video.